Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video we're going to talk about encryption in .NET. I will show you how to use a symmetric encryption algorithm to implement support for encrypting and decrypting your data. There are two types of encryption algorithms. There is symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption algorithms use the same key for both encrypting and decrypting data. This approach is typically faster than asymmetric encryption, however it comes with a challenge, and that is how do you safely share the encryption key between all of the involved parties. Asymmetric encryption uses a pair of encryption keys. There is a so-called public key, which is used for encryption, and then a private key, which can be used to decrypt the encrypted data. This encryption approach enables communication between two parties without having to exchange the private key. Instead, one party can use the public key, and the other one just needs the private key to be able to decrypt the data. Now, this also enables the reverse flow, where we can use a private key to encrypt the data, and then a public key to verify if the encrypted data is correct. And this is something that's commonly used in a JSON web token, where the last element in a JSON web token payload is a signature which we can verify. Now in this video, I want to focus on symmetric encryption, and this type of encryption uses a secret key that is used in both the encryption and decryption process. So we start with a plain text, and let's say we want to encrypt it. So we feed the secret key, into the encryption algorithm, and this produces the ciphertext. This is the encrypted version of our plain text. Now we can also do the reverse. We can take the ciphertext and decrypt it, and of course we have to provide the secret key to the decryption algorithm. And then this produces the same plain text that we started with. And this is what I want to demonstrate using just simple C sharp. So let's jump into the code and see how we can build this. So I have a simple console application, and let's say I have a plain text file that contains an open API key. I want to be able to somehow securely store this so that if somebody gains access to my system, they can't abuse my API key because it's encrypted. Whenever I want to use it to make calls to the OpenAI API, I can just decrypt this using the private key and then obtain the original plain text. Now, of course, this doesn't solve the problem of sharing the private key, which I'm going to discuss in a separate video. But for now, let me just show you how you can implement symmetric encryption using C Sharp. So let's start by reading the contents of our plain text file. So I'm going to say file read all text async, and I'm going to await this, and I'll just specify plain text txt as the file that I want to read. Then I'm going to initialize my master key that I can use to encrypt my plain text, and then later decrypt it if I want to do. So for this, it's suggested that you use a 256 byte random number, and you can get one using the random number generator get bytes method, and I need 32 bytes to get back my master key. Now this is going to be an array of bytes. And now all I need is some method, which I'm going to call encrypt, and I need to pass it the plain text and the master key to obtain the encrypted version of the contents of my plain text file. Now, we don't have this method yet, and let's go ahead and create it. I'm just going to use a local function accepting the plain text and the master key as a byte array. Currently, the most popular symmetric encryption algorithm is AES, which stands for Advanced Encryption Standard, and you can obtain an AES instance by saying AES create. Now, this is a type available in the system security cryptography namespace. Now, you can configure a couple of settings like the cipher mode, or the padding mode. The values that I'm showing here are the default ones, and you can check out the documentation for what each one of them means on the enome itself. Now, there are two components that are always going to be randomly initialized when you create a new AES instance. That is the key representing our master key, and I want to be able to manually set this so that I can also configure the master key for the decryption process. Now, there is another component called the IV, which stands for initialization vector, and this value is there to introduce an additional level of randomness in the encryption process. Now, if you think of it, if we encrypt the same plain text twice, using the same master key, we're going to get the same encrypted value. And this is something we want to avoid, and this is what the initialization vector is for. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's actually very similar to the process of salting when we are implementing password hashing. So for this, I'm going to say random number generator, get bytes, and I want to obtain 16 bytes. Now for this, I can also define a constant, 
for example, IV size, and I will make it available to my local method. So now that I have my encryption algorithm, I'm going to start producing my encrypted data. So for this, I'm going to create a new memory stream, which is going to contain the encrypted bytes. And the first value I want to write to my memory stream is the initialization vector. So I'm going to say AES IV, the offset will be zero. And then the size is going to be IV size. This is because I will need to remember the IV value if I want to be able to decrypt this. So I'm going to store it together with the encrypted text. Then we need to create a couple of more objects. The first one is going to be an encryptor. And we can get this by saying AES create encryptor. I'm going to wrap this in a using statement. And I'm going to create another using statement right below where I'm going to create a new crypto stream by saying new crypto stream. And we're going to provide the memory stream, our encryptor, the crypto stream mode is going to be right. And this is all I need to provide to the constructor. And then I need to create one more object, which is going to be a stream writer. And I'm going to initialize it by specifying the crypto stream. And finally, I'm going to say stream writer, write and provide the plain text. This is going to trigger the encryption process using the values that I configured here. And this is all going to be written into the memory stream, which we pass to the crypto stream here. Now, take note that I'm using a using statement here and it's going to go out of scope once I complete the stream writer write method. At this point, I can expect the encrypted values to be written to my memory stream, which is still open at this point in time. And what I can do here is, for example, convert this into a base64 string. So I'm going to say convert to base64, and I will say memory stream to array. So I want to convert my array of bytes into some readable format that I can store in a file. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to just write this to the console and let's go ahead and place a breakpoint here and start our application. And you can see I have my plain text containing my API key. The master key contains 32 randomly generated bytes. And now I'm going to create my AES instance, write the IV vector which is randomly generated as well into my memory stream and then proceed to encrypt the plain text and finally produce everything as a base64 string. So at this point we have our encrypted string which contains a bunch of gibberish and it's not at all similar to the plain text that we provided. So if I press continue we should see the encrypted value in the output as a base64 string. So now I want to be able to take this encrypted value and decrypt it back into my plain text. So how can we do this? Well, we have to do the reverse of what we did in the encrypt method. Now, in order to save us some time, and also because this is quite similar to the encryption process, I'm just going to drop in the implementation for the decrypt method, and let me just quickly walk you through it. Our two arguments are now the ciphertext, and the same master key that we used in the encryption process. Now we have to convert our ciphertext from a base64 string into an array of bytes representing our raw cipher data, and we want to make sure that this at least contains more bytes than the IV size, which is 16. So we want to extract the initialization vector so we can pass it to the AES instance as well as our encrypted data. So we're going to copy this from the start of our cipher data array, and then we can initialize our AES instance and provide the same master key and the same initialization vector that we used in the encryption process. Then I'm just going to create a memory stream, create a decryptor, this time using the AES instance. And remember that here we created an encryptor, so it's slightly different. And then we also create a crypto stream, this time the crypto stream mode is read. And finally a stream reader where I'm going to say read to end and obtain my string value. Encryption methods can typically throw a cryptographic exception. So this is something that we should also handle in the encrypt method. So I'm going to take all of this out, say try catch, and I'm going to catch the cryptographic exception. And for example, we can write the same message like we have before. So I will say encryption failed. And finally, let's go ahead and call the decrypt method on our encrypted data and see if what we get back is correct. And I'm also going to add another test. I'm going to write a sort of an assertion. I will say console write line. And I wanted to write a Boolean value that checks if the plain text is equal to the decrypted value. Now let's go ahead and add a breakpoint here. 
and I will start my application. And we're first going to encrypt our plain text and obtain our encrypted values. So the same as before. Now, what I want to show you is the decryption process. So we start with our cipher text, which contains a bunch of gibberish, and we get an array of bytes containing our initialization vector and the encrypted data. So we're going to copy these into the respective arrays. This is our IV vector, and then this is our actual encrypted data. So I'm going to initialize and configure my AES instance, and then create a bunch of streams, a decryptor, and finally read the stream to the end. And this should give me back the same plain text that I started with at the beginning of the application. Now for good measure, I'm also going to check if this is correct. So let me hit continue. And if we open up the console, we can see our encrypted API key, the decrypted version, and then true, which means that the decrypted value is equal to the plain text. So this is how we can implement support for encryption and decryption inside our applications. Now, if you want to see a practical use case for this, I recommend checking out my Pragmatic REST APIs course, where we implement support for integrating with the GitHub API, which requires us to provide an API key. Now, because this is very sensitive data, we want to make sure that we store it in an encrypted form inside of our system and only decrypt it when we want to make a call to the GitHub API on behalf of our user. You can check it out from the pinned comment that's going to be right below this video. Let me know in the comments if this video was interesting and if I should do more videos about encryption. If you want to learn more about application security, I recommend checking out this video next. Make sure to smash the like button on your way out and until next time, stay awesome.